Why is coronavirus spreading so fast? How long does it survive on fruit, packaging and around the home? And does it hang in the air? Recognising the risks will help slow the spread and prevent health systems becoming overwhelmed. Coronavirus can survive on plastic or stainless steel for three days, on cardboard for a day and on copper for around four hours. COVID-19 days are not the days that people should be going out and palpating 10 mangoes to find the most ripe one. So if you touch it, you buy it. Uh, but if you are buying produce, you don't know who else might have touched it. So the safest thing to do is to bring it home and to wash it down with soap and water, particularly if you're going to be consuming the skin and particularly if you're not cooking it. Antibacterial soap is unnecessary as it's used to penetrate bacterial cell membranes, which viruses don't have. Tests have also found that the virus can linger in the air, sparking worries about shared buildings and air conditioning. But there are good reasons why it's unlikely to spread this way. In the tests, a nebulizer was used to create fine aerosols, and the virus survived in the air for three hours. Would this happen under normal conditions? Experts have pointed out that if it could easily exist as an aerosol, we would be seeing much greater levels of transmission. The most contagious virus is measles. It can live in the air for two hours and one person can infect 90% of the people near them. For coronavirus, the rate of infection among people living in the same house is around 10%. And among other close contacts, it's much lower. One study tested the air in the rooms of coronavirus patients. It found no trace of the virus, except in the toilet. It's unlikely that the airborne virus is a major threat. So why is coronavirus spreading so fast? During the 2003 coronavirus outbreak, known as SARS, a passenger aboard a flight from Hong Kong to Beijing infected a surprising number of people. The World Health Organization defines contact with an infected person as sitting within two rows of each other, and this would have missed half of the infected people. The reason was simple. Even on flights, most people move around. Mark Rober recently showed how difficult it is to avoid spreading the virus, picking it up and touching your face. If you turn a black light on, it becomes visible. Everything you see here started with just the teacher and one student having a little of that powder on their hands. And one major reason for the rapid spread of coronavirus is that we can spread it without realizing we have it. After getting infected, it can take an average of five to six days before you feel sick and your symptoms start to appear. But you can already spread it to people in that period, even if you feel healthy. Just as people realize they're sick, they seem to be at the most risk of passing it along to others. Research shows that isolating the most vulnerable people will not be enough, with a major shortage of critical care beds and many avoidable deaths. The number of UK deaths has been rising a at a faster rate than both Italy and China at the same stage of their outbreak, both of which experience unsustainable pressure on their health services. Non sottovalutare questa situazione. As many as five to 10% of the severe cases and of deaths uh, are uh, actually among the healthcare personnel. Stiamo lavorando con un flusso di pazienti molto alto, anche triplo rispetto al normale con un 50% di personale in meno. So the problem is that now we don't have any uh, intensive care bed anymore. We have to intubate, put on a helicopter and transfer to, to another region actually because in the region all the intensive cares are full. Cioè l'esempio italiano deve servire alle, alle altri stati per non commettere magari gli stessi errori. It isn't empty, it looks it, but it isn't. It's full of people, but they are all self-isolating. They are all following the rules. Very few people come out onto the streets. And everyone we've spoken to has said that this is what the UK should look like already. If we all keep our distance, it will mean that doctors can treat all the most critically ill patients. 
saving lives. But keeping our distance introduces another silent killer, which does hang in the air. Studies have found that loneliness can seriously damage our health. In the UK, 60% of young people say they often feel lonely. And nearly half of all Americans feel lonely regularly. Kurzgesagt created an excellent video on how to tackle it. When we feel lonely, we tend to look for negative reactions, often perceiving negativity where there is none, and we cut ourselves off. Now is a great time to break this vicious cycle for yourself and for others. So do pick up the phone to those who are most isolated. Try playing games over Skype or sharing funny videos. I like to remind myself of the last line of Sullivan's Travels. There's a lot to be said for making people laugh. Did you know that that's all some people have? It isn't much, but it's better than nothing in this cockeyed caravan.